alpha equals 0 0.1, 0 0.05, or 0 0.01. Um, now this is the typically these are typical ranges. This is kind of the of the three the least stringent. In other words, uh, you don't need that much evidence to prove it. But as you go up this scale, you're only willing to tolerate a uh, five percent error, and here you're only willing to tolerate a one up to a one percent error. So this is the most stringent. So let's consider an example. Um, where it's really important to, number, number one, it really depends on the context. If you're looking at a, a, a place where you're talking about medications, you probably don't want to make an error. Um, because if you s conclude that the, uh, the medication is more effective than you state it is, or than it really is, then you might end up hurting a lot of people. And uh, you may not be able to tolerate a large error rate. Versus if you're looking at a survey, and the survey doesn't imp have gigantic impacts, or potential um, impacts, then you may be satisfied with just a 10% uh, error rate. Now, it doesn't mean you will. It doesn't mean you will uh, run into an error. It just means there's a 10% chance you might. So, suppose that a new uh, diabetes medication is being tested. Suppose the cutoff to pass the medication through the FDA is a 75% success rate. That is, the success rate must be significantly higher than this. The company conducts Oh, well, at least the company would want it to be. Um, the conduct, company conducts a clinical trial and finds that 9 out of the 10 patients had a successful outcome. Since the study process is very costly, no more patients can be tested. Okay, so that tells us that, that pi is assumed to be point, uh, 0 0.75. We have 9 out of 10 successes in our sample trial. The first thing we'll do is, is state the competing null an alternative hypothesis for, for the company study. So this means that um, pi is equal to 0 0.75 and we have 9 out of 10 successes in the study or in the trial. So in this case our null hypothesis is going to be well that it's equal to 0.75 in which case the medication won't be approved. In the alternative hypothesis we need it to be greater than 0.75 and we'll only be able to conclude that it's greater than 0.75 if our sample is sufficiently high enough. So our population is all diabetes patients and um, our sample is going to be the 10 diabetes patients. Now as uh, discussed earlier we don't want to conclude or uh, reject the null hypothesis if there's if the evidence is not strong enough so we're probably going to see a little bit of variability 9 out of 10 hey that seems great but is that high enough to conclude that the null hypothesis is false okay now the power of this test isn't going to be ex incredibly large because our sample is so small so um, only having 9 out of 10 may not be high enough to account for sample variability Okay, so back to the problem. So based on the sample and assuming the null hypothesis is true, what is the probability of observing 9 out of 10 successes or 10 out of 10 successes? What about 9 or more successes? Well, there are two ways we can address this. Um, per the calculator video, we could actually look at um, the... First of all, we'll do our sequence of probabilities from 9 to 10. So the sequence in the binomial probability um, with oops, 10 trials probability of success is 0.75 so if we assume that there's a 75 percent chance of being cured then how likely is it that we would see 9 or 10 out of 10 okay well, uh, to see how likely it would be to get 9 out of 10, I guess I don't really need the sequence part, I would get uh, 0 0.18771. So that means there's actually an 18.8% 18 .8 chance I would get exactly 9 out of 10. Um, what about 10 out of 10? How likely is it that I'd see all 10 out of 10 patients uh, cured if there's a 75% success rate? Well, that would be... 5.6%. Okay, so that means that um, the probability that X is 